the best concept cars are daring and dazzling, and apparently made of unobtainium since few make it to the showroom floor with any kind of bold design intact. That makes the Lexus LC500 a rarity. Its exotic look is remarkably close to the LFLC concept first shown in 2012, right down to the infrared paint that looks two feet deep. This car is also available in green, not paint color, a hybrid powertrain. This V8 powered LC500 is EPA rated at 19 miles per gallon average. The 500H hybrid, 30 miles per gallon. But this car's not about sipping gas, it's for making a statement. Long, low, and wide, consider that statement made. Drawn up with loads of originality, especially in the C-pillar area, this two plus two coupe looks expensive. Some will find there's a little too much going on in places. It'll be recognized as a Lexus from a thousand paces. The LC's spindle grill is as elegant as the signature mouth can be, at least until a front plate is attached. LC's interior is also close to the concept cars. The materials and workmanship give off a hand-tailored vibe rather than something stamped and extruded in a factory. At a starting price of $93,000, I would hope so. LC500 rides on the GAL platform, which stands for Global Architecture Luxury, same as the newest LS500 sedan. The four-door does not get the eight-cylinder, though. The naturally aspirated five-liter packs 471 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque. Balance-wise, the powertrain mass sits behind the front axle line. A rear-drive car, the 10-speed automatic transmission's performance is impressive, but controlled by the kind of joystick I don't care for. The LC can be relaxed or sharpened up. In the most responsive Sport S Plus drive mode, the variable exhaust gets maximum snarl. LC is a powerful car. It's also on the heavy side, 4,300 pounds. That's about the weight of a three-row crossover. Not that it's slow. Zero to 60 easily happens in under five seconds. A performance package at nearly six grand would add active rear steering, variable ratio steering, and a speed-activated rear wing. It might make a difference when pushing the LC hard on a track, I'll wager few of these coupes will see battle duty like that. The only thing that hurts this coupe's daily driving ability is rearward visibility. Everything about this car is silky smooth in that triple Teflon coated Lexus way. It's very comfortable, even with low profile tires, the ride quality never gets brittle. All that and it gobbles up curves and twisties without drama. In full on gonzo driving, a Porsche 911 would vanquish this Lexus if that's what you're looking for. This would be a great grand touring car, and those who could afford the $103,000 as tested price could probably also afford the gas, maybe even a private jet. The 10-speed transmission works like a Vulcan mind meld. Always in the right gear, it's easy to overlook its goodness. Focus in on it, and you'll find it snaps off shifts nearly as quick as a dual clutch. No doubt the 500H hybrid model has much better fuel economy, but probably doesn't have this sound. <laughs> I could listen to that all day. I'm easily amused. Overall, I saw 18 miles per gallon. This V8 switches from auto cycle to Atkinson cycle when cruising. The computer registered an impressive 27 miles per gallon on the highway. The hybrid is a $4,500 upsell, so it's doubtful owners will make their money back. And the gas electric powertrain doesn't provide the sonic theater of the five liter. Back to the engine note, it's not too loud. I don't think I'd ever get tired of it. Same goes for the dramatic cabin. While the LC is no small car, this space seems to be tailored around the front occupants, cozy in a good way. 
passengers get their choice of two grab handles or use them both in extreme conditions. The head-up display is an option box that should be checked. Unfortunately, there is no choice when it comes to the user interface. I'm not the only one to complain that this touchpad is oddly distracting when driving, and for reasons unexplained, Toyota products don't come with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Either would be a big help. Come on. Go ahead, time to test the back seat. Uh, no thanks, I might be the evil twin, but I'm not the dumb one. Hey, hey, I mean, come on, look at this space. It's clearly just for kids, just what you would expect from a two plus two coupe. I have to take my family to the airport in this in a couple days. They are not gonna be happy. There will be three of us, but my son has a lot of college stuff, so we'll be filling the trunk, the back seat, and a lap or two. Uh, remember, this is not a small car. SUVs are wildly popular these days and profitable. Two-door Grand Touring Coupes? Uh, not so much. Lexus could have used the engineering resources given to the LC to build, say, a three-row RX crossover. So this is a gift to enthusiasts and modern art collectors. It's not often concept design hits the road. The LC500 does it with equal parts panache and performance. FYI, if you need credentials to validate a car's design impact, the LC500 won the 2016 Eyes On Design Award for Best Production Car and Best Designed Interior. The judges are active and retired designers from in and out of the automotive industry, plus respected teachers. The LC has the distinct honor of winning as both a production car and as the LFLC concept back in 2012. I believe the only other car to do that is the Cadillac Converge that in production form became the ELR. And a bit off topic, I suggest those interested in design dive deep into the history of the Pontiac Aztec. Uh, seriously, many don't know that the concept version scored off the charts with the public when it debuted. The story of how it became synonymous with failure after it wound its way through development is fascinating. Ah, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around to the very end of my look at the Lexus LC500. It is a very interesting car to look at. Uh, or maybe I'm just very interesting. Or you're very bored. On any given day, either one of those could be true, I suppose. <laughs> That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk. Okay, happy now? I told you it was cramped.